All right, so wonderful. So I want to welcome everybody here tonight and uh, all my dear patients and family and friends that uh, they've invited, people from the community as well. Um, I appreciate your taking the time tonight to, to spend uh, Sunday night, part portion of your Sunday night uh, with me, and I trust and hope that it will be uh, valuable for you. Um, so this is the final segment of a three-part presentation that I, I produced for you on the relationship of environmental toxins as a reason for health challenges and our climbing disease rates. It's a modus of holistic is reasons why. Why is that? That's always the eternal question, and that's uh, my teacher, Dr. George Goodhart, the founder of AK. He used to always say, well, why, why is that, with his own special accent. that was sort of like, well, why is that? And we loved him for that. Um, I'm Dr. Mark Tirabello. Tonight's presentation, I've uh, entitled it Pearls from the Detox Summit, a summary of observation, research, and results. So last summer, I participated in a week-long online summit uh, that brought together some of the most well-known minds and researchers in holistic care from around the world, sharing their thoughts and observations about health and wellness, and essentially how to stay healthy in a toxic world. You know, it's good stuff. And I took notes. And uh, tonight what I'm going to do is um, um, share some of uh, the 30 presenters' finder findings with you. And hopefully a, a quick getting to the point type of summary that um, you will um, get some nice benefit from. I don't have time to go into who each of them are or their bios or um, their expertise. Um, so my suggestion would be is to maybe jot down the, their names. Um, you can find many of them on Facebook. You can Google them, um, and you can find out more about uh, their research. About, uh, their research. Some of them you may recognize, and uh, uh, some of them uh, you may you may not. So I like to start out with uh, uh, Dr. Alejandro Jungar. Dr. Um, Jungar immediately pointed out that one of the, the main challenges that we have um, as human beings, as staying healthy, is essentially um, how we eat. That really that nature did not intend us to eat uh, the way that we eat. I mean, look at the way we eat. We eat out of boxes. We eat out of tubes. We eat out of cans. And uh, then we add chemicals to the boxes and tubes and the cans uh, chemicals to make the product uh, look good, uh, smell good, and to last longer. Now, um, I don't think that that's the way nature intended us to eat, and I think that's the main problem with why we have uh, disease rates being so high. You know, nature intended us to eat from from the earth, and for us to have soil that is, that is vibrant. Um, because when the soil was vibrant with vitamins and minerals, um, it goes into the plant. Vibrant soil produces a vibrant plant, and then from a vibrant plant, we get nice, healthy, vibrant vegetables and fruits and phytonutrients that Creator put on this earth to help us stay well and vibrant. And the more you go back to that type of eating, the more healthier you are. We have a challenge with animal products. Um, animal products are they're full of chemicals, as as our um, our phytonutrients, as are our vegetables and our fruits as well, because we have to douse things, douse the fruits and vegetables with pesticides and insecticides. Uh, why do we have to do that? Um, simply because the the um, the fruits and vegetables are too weak to defend themselves. So we have to help them, similar to a way to our body has become that our body has become so weak that we have to douse our body with antibiotics and drugs to stay well and healthy these days. So there's sort of a sad similarity. In animal products, well, 
we have to douse the animals with antibiotics to keep them healthy, which leads to a health challenge that we have in today's day and age of the overuse of antibiotics um, that's given by the medical uh, profession um, for, for various illnesses. Some are necessary and some really is not necessary. Um, but we also get it in our meat supply and what happens is that the bacteria accommodates to, um, to the antibiotics and it just becomes not as effective. Um, plus there's steroids and hormones in the meats and that's why we see today that young girls are starting their, their menses much younger and have much full, fuller development than they, than they used to be, simply because there is uh, more hormones in the meats as well. Um, we talked, uh, the doctor talked about farm-raised salmon. So um, it's always good, you know, when, when you're choosing fish on your menu, you always want to have, choose deep sea water fish. And that'd be, your best fish is salmon and cod and halibut and mackerel. Those are your best fishes to choose from. But nowadays what we're doing is that we are farm-raising them. And what most of the time is done is that they actually choose land type of foods to feed the fish. Uh, feed Fish don't feed from land foods, yay? And, uh, but it helps to raise those fish a lot quicker. Uh, plus there's in farm-raised fish that there are a lot of other chemicals. And another one is that they feed them orange ink so that, hey, it looks good, but uh, really is it? The muc uh, doctor also points out how mucus buffers uh, toxicity and, uh, and about fat. So what, what is he meaning by this? What, what Dr. Jungar is saying is that um, the body tries to protect its, itself. And the body protects itself in, in two ways, which is not in the long run the most healthful way for us to live. One of the ways that the body protects itself from, from toxins is by putting mucus over a toxic and protecting itself. The body also protects itself by, by putting fat cells around toxins that we, that we absorb. So thus we have reasons for a lot of people with a lot of congestion, a lot of ongoing mucus uh, challenges. The mucus comes up from the intestinal area because the body is secretes it to, protect, to protect itself. And, um, and we have, of course, our, our overweight challenges because of the body uh, producing adipose or fat around to fat, the toxins to protect it from the body. Stress is a toxin? Yes, it is. Because stress, mental emotional stress, is acidic. And the, for you to stay healthy and well, it's important for the body to be more alkaline in nature. So um, stress is acidic. Um, sugar is acidic. Coffee is acidic. Alcohol is acidic. Protein is acidic. Processed food, acidic. Cancer and other type of chronic diseases strive on an acid environment. So um, we want to look also, and we're going to touch base with this as, as we go on tonight, about mental emotional components actually being a toxin in, in, the, in the body as well. Dr. Jeffrey Bland, who's certainly a well-known international scholar, um, demonstrates a word called uh, uh, molecular toxicology. And molecular toxicology is the subtle influence that the toxins are having on our body on a molecular level. That it's, that it's influencing the natural way of health that our body should experience. Chronic to toxicity relates to cellular dysfunction, that it ties into chronic illnesses rather than acute poisoning. So acute poisoning, okay, you're sick right away. Chronic toxic, tox, toxicity is years of accumulation of PCBs, of DDTs, of arsenic, of mercury, of aluminum as, as years go on. And this is what's happening in, in, the, in, 
in our bodies. And the environment is contributing to chronic disease, in, or, or the environment is contributing to chronic disease in the absence of acute toxicity. It's causing the body to function, um, the body's functioning in a suboptimal environment is basically what's happening. And when you don't give the body the resources what it needs, what happens then is that the body is that the body gets gets sick. We don't feel as good. We have what we call feel like crap syndrome because of the environment that we've set up for us. A question that was asked, well what about fasting? Some people fast as a way to detox. The the, the challenge with fasting is that Fasting can be a way to clear out the toxins out of the body, but does a person have the raw material, have the biochemistry to support a fast to be able to clear this out? So most people have some type of, have some type of glucose challenges, hypoglycemic or hyperglycemic. So if you take away the food part of it, then their body, you know, is not stable in their, in their blood sugar level and they just don't have the ability and the stamina to be able to detox in the way that they should. BPAs are biphenos and what these are is uh, the plastics that we get in our environment and this has also been taken a good look in by, by um, uh, researchers because we're getting too much plastics from, from bottles, uh, from water bottles, we also get it from shower curtains. When we shower, the the hot water and the steam that, that develops from it takes those biphenos, the plastic, and we inhale it. And also on receipt tapes as well. So that sort of disturbs me at the office when I have people receipts because it's like, really? It's like, how come these things do a BPA on it? And maybe I should, sometimes I'm like, well, I should get my um, my gloves out when I handle these, the tapes as well. But uh, you should know about that uh, too. Dr. Mark Hyman, he's a uh, well-known, maybe you've seen him on public uh, television. Um, his, his, um, spotlight was was about sugar and um, he says that we consume on the average 150 pounds of sugar a year. It's about average weight for most people, it's about 150-ish or so. So can you imagine consuming that much sugar in, in one year? And he claims that the flour, you know, it's even worse, that we, we're consuming too much flour products uh, from our baked goods, and that's causing uh, more of a liver type of failure. He, he stresses that we, should, that we should minimize the sugar, the grains, the gluten, dairy, the processed foods, the junky oils, and the caffeine, and the alcohol um, in a goal, to, in a goal to, stay, to stay healthy. And um, he says also that the mercury that we, that we are getting from the environment that we breathe in from coal burning um, electric plants and other industry, um, as well as playing in the old days with mercury thermometers and, um, and other things, um, is linked for chronic disease. That the mercury is actually a major contributor to, um, um, to um, fatigue, immune disorders, um, infertility and, and high blood pressure as, as well. Toxic thought it poisons us and affects gene expression. So again, when you have thoughts that are negative and are not positive in nature, um, thoughts are things. And it's a body-mind-spirit connection. It's your focus on what you want in your life and your goals in your life. And if your thoughts are too much about anxiety or too much negativity, and we all have chatter, but just thank your mind for sharing and just sort of notice it. And you want to stay more on the more positive notes because how you think is so you are and what you focus on expands. And sometimes those little voices just sort of get out of hand until you go, well, where's that coming from? Is that me? And you've got to be able to go, oh, is that me or is that not me? And, and perhaps make a distinction. David Perlmutter is a, uh, also well-known. He's a, um, 
uh, medical doctor that's a medical doctor of uh, neurology um, who practices in Naples, Florida. And he's also been on public TV a few times. I enjoyed seeing him. Um, he also points out about the, the challenges of, of, of sugar that we have uh, in this country that we're just way, way too much of it, that, that the sugar and carbs are actually toxins and um, is leading to brain uh, dysfunction. So what he points out, the doctor points out, that there's 6.5 million children that have been labeled as ADHD, and two-thirds of these children are taking brain-altering meds. Now, he points out that 4 million should not be considered amphetamine deficient. So what he means by this is that the meds for ADHD is Ritalin. It's an amphetamine. It's in the same classification as cocaine. And to put children on this, he's, he's like saying, hey, the 4 million children, the reason for them to cure them is not to put them on Ritalin, but to actually to look at their diet, to limit the carbs, um, to address the, uh, the blood sugar levels, um, in, in their body. Um, he also points out that um, um, that um, the, the higher level of blood sugar that a person has, the higher the risk of dementia. So um, as we look at our older population, um, this, is, this is something that should be in focus. So a lot of the older population, a lot of us these days, um, still start the day with Orange juice. Well, orange juice is high glycemic. It's high blood sugar. And we might think like, wow, okay, what am I, a whole grain bread? Well, that's high glycemic also. So these are, these are um, questions and situations that should be addressed if someone has, a, a, you know, has dementia or Alzheimer's uh, in, in their family. Um, the doctor says there's absolutely no requirement for carbohydrates in the human diet at all. And um, he says that instead of so much carbs, that's, that, that it's better to have the brain burning fat than it is on the carbs. So we should use more organic fats and extra virgin olive oil. He says that the notion that a high-fat diet or even a diet that contains cholesterol is somehow bad for the heart is really not keeping up with current science. Um, so, yes, eggs are good. The yolks are good. A balance is good as well, and um, it's best to, you want to avoid the bad fats, but you want to limit the carbs, you want to eat above ground and dark colored vegetables, you want to go organic as much as possible, and uh, you also want to eat the pulp and the juices. So um, when you're juicing, uh, you know, you want to continue to eat the pulp that that's actually the good part of the uh, of the juice as well. Uh, Kara Fitzgerald is a, a, new, a naturopath, um, and she points out a very good website, and we're going to anchor this website on, on our website, um, EWG, uh, which stands for EnvironmentalWorkingGroup.org. And I would encourage you to to visit that very very fine website. A lot of good information about the environment and how it relates to, to our health, as well as a list on here about what foods that you should eat organic with and what foods you should that you don't necessarily have to buy organic for. You can save some money. It's not all necessary for this type of food. EWG.org. Kara points out that there's different ways to check and see if you know if there is a a, a burden with, with metal. One way is actually to do a blood draw, which will give us right away a notice of if the person has a toxin exposure, that we can check for lead and mercury and cadmium and arsenic, and it'll show right a current exposure. The other way is it checks for accumulation, which is the way that we do it in the office, which is a urine check, and uh, we also we chelate um, the toxins out of the out of the fat tissue. Excuse me, because that's that's where it nestles, and so we have a chelating agent to get out of the tissue, and then we can do a urine test and send it to the lab. Um, 
the ways to, to see, well, okay, well, how do I know if I'm toxic? Well, one of the things that um, Kara does and we do in our office as well is we have an environmental exposure questionnaire, which you're welcome to um, to fill out as, as well. And this gives us an idea and uh, uh, based on symptoms about what kind of symptoms that you have that could be related to toxicity in the environment. And if we're, we're within a certain range, a high level range, and certainly uh, we want to move ahead with the detox. Also to notice if, if you have rashes on your body, if that's people that have an uh, ongoing situation with rashes, that's toxins, a loss of hair, a change in texture of the hair, um, that could be toxicity as well. And also like multiple white spots on the nails. So sometimes that could be zinc but it can be also toxicity in the environment um, too. Um, as far as getting mercury out, a lot of it is 80% of the mercury is excreted in, in the stool. Uh, the trace mineral selenium, which is in your multivitamin, will bind mercury. Um, also a, a, a type of algae that we have in the office and is available called chlorella. Chlorella also will, will bind um, toxic elements to excrete out of the body as well. Uh, Dr. Fitzgerald warns about uh, enhanced sanitizers that there's uh, certain toxins in it, um, that you should be leery about a, a, an ingredient in your hand sanitizer called uh, triglycerin. And uh, she also, in different subjects here, points out about uh, that there's been found to be PCBs from farm-raised salmon, which again, another reason to always go for more ocean, and um, um, fresh ocean um, salmon. And um, also you should always choose organic butter uh, because there's PCBs that have been found in the butter um, as well. Aristo Vajdani points out that there's, that there's over 80,000 chemicals that have been introduced into our environment and only 5% has been determined as safe by the Food and Drug Administration. Plus that every, tw every year there's 2,500 new chemicals that's introduced uh, to us uh, into our lives. Um, and it's found in over 6 million products that we drink and we put on our skin and we eat and in our air. Um, and so that's how we get all these chemicals. Now, they did. A, there's a research project that was done many years ago. It was out in, out in New York. And uh, they want to explore the reasons why it is that children were getting sick so often these days, that the, the sky, rating, uh, sky rising in uh, cancer rates. And uh, they actually started doing the research, and then they stopped because it got completed so quickly. They didn't really have to go on anymore. That right away, right off the get-go, the, the, the mother's placenta is not protecting the baby like it once did from certain chemicals. That the, over, there's already, from the baby born, the baby has to deal with over 287 chemicals that were found right away in the umbilical cord blood. They also found that there's 10 times more chemicals in breast milk than in cow's milk. So certainly, you know, nursing is the way to go. It's not any other way. But, hmm, you know, it's like it's a challenge these days because, yeah, you know, the mom's got, um, you know, got pesticides in, in her body and toxins and her fat cells, and it gets in the, in the breast milk and goes to the baby. So it makes our babies, our infants, are most the vulnerable part of, the, of our uh, uh, population. So doctor also noticed that conditions, autoimmune conditions like lupus is on the rise, and mostly with, with females. Um, and a lot of the reason is, is we get um, uh, chemicals that act like estrogens from cosmetics. We get it from our lipstick and, um, and other things that women uh, will, put, will put on their, on their bodies. Food additives will compromise digestive uh, enzymes, so uh, he's noticed that. And the other thing that the doctor looked at is the um, fact that autism, um, ADD, ADHD, it starts in the gut and it manifests in the brain. So as I've said before, and I'll say here again and to continue to remind you,
that the digestive system is one of the most important parts of the body. And it's actually the, it's how you nourish the body after the food that you choose. It's also over 65% of your immune system is around your digestive system. And it's where all the serotonin, um, which is a neurotransmitter, comes from. The serotonin uh, for anxiety and depression is not so much a brain element, but it's a gut element. And what uh, Dr. Vajdani noticed is that he's been able to help people with autism and ADHD challenges simply by managing the gut, getting the digestive system to work properly, um, and he's, he's, he's um, got an exceptional results simply by doing so. Martha Herbert's medical doctor, and she wrote the book, The Autism Revolution. And, um, and, things, and she says that things outside can make you sick, and things inside can make you better. So as my teacher, Dr. Goodhart, used to say, health is an inside job. It doesn't take place from outside sources, from this drug or that drug, but health is a manifest and it's our birthright for, for all of us. So Dr. Herbert says, are you retaining the ability for your body to repair? Are you, in other words, are you giving the body the chemistry it needs to handle the stress of your life? And that includes the, to the stress of 80,000 plus toxins that we're all that we all experience. She says that with autism, the way that the brain behaves is because of the high total toxic load and not enough resources to handle the toxicity. So the toxins that these that the children are experiencing from maybe a start in life of 287 chemicals right from the get go um, in their umbilical cord. Um, having to deal with that, maybe not being good detoxifiers, not having the resources right off the bat, eating too much sugar and trashy foods. It's just given, not allowing their body to have the resources it needs to clear and clear out. So the brain waves are altered. She also says that sleep is like a brain trash collector. So when you get enough rest, you actually it's active detox. Your body... Um, is clearing the hard drives and, and putting things together and clearing out your, your drives, let's say, in such computer terms. So, um, again, the importance of sleep um, to stay well and healthy. And here are two of her um, sites, um, Autism Revolution, which I think is the name of her book, .org, and AutismYandHow.org, which you're welcome to access. Kelly Brogan is a medical, is a medical doctor. And she basically says, and, every, and holistic doctors are familiar with, that inflammation is, is a common ground for, for disease. And for, for, in other words, for a person to stay well and healthy, it's important and imperative to decrease the inflammation in a person's body that's resulting from an ongoing injury or maybe biochemistry um, from free rad situations where the body doesn't have the chemistry it needs to handle the heat that it, that it produces to keep us well and healthy. So she says that toxicity proceeds inflammation. So as this, the degree of toxins that we have in our environment has allowed us to be more inflamed. She says the dioxin that we get part of the pesticides is producing a cortisol influence. Cortisol is influencing our adrenal glands. Roundup is uh, pesticides that are that the um, company Monsanto uh, puts out. And um, I'm, I'm being nice here because this isn't uh, about Monsanto, but we'll leave that for another um, webinar perhaps. But the use of Monsanto, uh, use of uh, Roundup rather, um, is a digestive bacteria uh, disruptor. So um, the use of Roundup with the GMOs is contributing to um, uh, disruption in our digestive system. And again, you disrupt the digestive system, you start bringing down the immune system and the way the person nourishes their body, um, and you have a challenge. Dr. Brogan suggests giving chlorella, which is the, um, the product I mentioned a few minutes ago. 
um, that helps to leach out mercury and leach out lead and other toxic metals, and as well as the product turmeric, which is a um, brings down the heat and inflammation of the body uh, to mothers to be to help to clear out some of these poisons to have it so the person will have a healthy baby. <coughs> Excuse me, um, Dr. Saram Khalsa. He's a medical doctor. Um, he reports once again about the 287 chemicals um, that uh, were privy to at birth. Um, and it's an accumulation load of toxicity in the body. Uh, the heavy metals and the pesticides, it's just start right off the bat. So what he notes is that um, it, to improve conditions such as allergies, as well as autoimmune situations like lupus, is to lower the toxicity of the individual. So when you lower the toxic toxic element, the immune system is able to come up and do what it's supposed to do instead of being short-circuited by the lead and the mercury and the other challenges uh, in the environment. He says it's uh, a good idea to detox a mother before she conceives. Um, she and He insists on no fish uh, during a pregnancy because of the amount of mercury. Um, and other uh, PCBs and other things that are fish uh, that a mother should not have. Um, he notes about endo endocrine disruptors um, uh, or heavy metals as a contributor to breast cancer. So um, these are the plastics that we get from the water bottles. Um, these are plastics that we get from shower curtains and plastic wraps. Um, also, we notice note that uh, when you use aluminum, we use deodorant. It has aluminum in it, and uh, so when a, when a lady or any individual puts the aluminum under the arm, if it's near the breast, that aluminum will go into the tissues and accumulate there um, as well. Co a person, person with cosmetics, you got 126 chemicals per day on the body for the average person from nine personal care products that the average uh, female, I assume, puts on the body, and you get about 126 different chemicals. And we talk about fragrances and, and perfumes, you got a two, about 200 chemicals in perfumes and fragrances that a person deals with right off, right off the bat as, as well. Amy Myers, she's a medical doctor, and uh, she wrote a book called The Myers Way. Um, as well as the uh, autoimmune solution book. And she notes about how chlorine and fluoride halides, and uh, this is where we can get the fluoride from the water and the chlorine from the water, um, can displace iodine and can affect thyroid function. So this is something that's been substantiated with, um, with research and one of the challenges that we have with chlorinating and using fluoride. Um, she notes that autoimmune diseases has had a threefold increase in the last 50 years, and that 75% of that increase, of that threefold increase in 50 years, is because what's happening in our, the, our environment these days. So only 25% um, is genetic, and that the rest of it is 75% um, is because of poisons that we're, that we're experiencing. The um, autoimmune commonalities um, are leaky gut. So um, people get autoimmune situations because of a condition known as leaky gut. So what is that? That's a thinning of the lining in the colon, mostly as a result of NSAIDs or non-steroidal um, anti-inflammatory meds. Um, alcoholism can cause, can cause this as well. Um, so when you heal the leaky gut, the autoimmune um, challenges like, uh, like MS or rheumatoid arthritis, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's can start to alleviate. I mean, these are, these are checklist things that we look at as holistic physicians on how to help people in a natural sort of way so that they can heal their conditions of, uh, these, um, these labels I just mentioned known as autoimmune conditions. So we have leaky, leaky gut. Also persons that are, have gluten sensitivities. If a person is sensitive to gluten, then oh, you get, it's so imperative to stay away from gluten. Um, it can just flare in the body as inflammation. 
um, causing these type of, of, of conditions. And it can also cause mental emotional conditions. And ultimately can cause celiac disease, which is a disruption of the villa. So there's very little absorption of your food. So um, people that, I mean, you should really minimize or eliminate wheat, period, from your diets right off the bat. Um, we do check in some ways in the office as much as we can without a blood test. We can get an idea. Um, if you are gluten sensitive, and certainly there are labs that are out, that we refer to uh, to get to have more objective testing. Uh, bringing down the, uh, the, uh, the toxic burden in the body. I'm looking for um, candida or yeast overgrowth in the body as a result of eating too much processed foods and sugars, um, too much um, um, uh, beer or wine, just you know, kicking things over to the other side of too much yeast. Uh, too much antibiotics can do that as well. Um, and small intestine bacteria overgrowth too. Again, we go back to the gut. And uh, as Dr. Meyer says, we breathe, we drink, we eat, we absorb toxins. And um, that's our world. That's what we created for ourselves. Uh, not that we did it, but uh, this is where we live. And um, if we are to avoid being a statistic uh, or being um, avoiding the what the average American does, which has to take uh, six to nine drugs a day just to get by, um, it's imperative to keep the the um, the body balanced and to give your body the resources it needs to uh, detox and stay clean in a proper way. Um, Terry Walls um, uh, points out that. Um, that the mitochondria, which are the power sources of their cell, are, are actually becomes defective with heavy metals and antibiotics. So um, when you do antibiotics, we have to take them, or if you choose to, um, when you have when we're when we're privy to the metals, the arsenic and the lead and the mercury, um, it affects the mitochondria, which is the power sources of the cell. So it short circuits them. And then we get fatigue and we get brain fog. So um, it's sort of a two-way street. In other words, that if you clear out the metals, then the mitochondria become stronger and the brain fog and the fatigue go away. But if, if you don't have the chemistry to get that going, then it's hard to clear out the, the metals and, and the other stuff out of the body. So that's where nutrition is important and that's the focus of it. She also notes that the cabbage family is good, good sources of food. Um, they have uh, to support the liver and the kidneys, so eating more of that is the way to go. Um, and she says eat seaweed. Seaweed is a lot of trace minerals and can be very healthy. Um, Lise Alshuler Al um, is a naturopathic um, physician, and she wrote the book, The, the Definitive Guide to Cancer. And the definitive guide to thriving after cancer. And um, she says that that toxic compounds that we get in our environment that stored in our cells um, get stored in our adipose uh, tissues. And this is what we talked about last Thursday in our last webinar. That a lot of the metals, a lot of the toxins, um, they are are fat absorbed. They they sequester in our adipose. Um, and that's why, again, why we gain weight because we can protect ourselves from it by putting body will put more fat around it, so it doesn't, so it doesn't, uh, the so it sits there. But it, it does, there is a the toxicity does get in, into the body. This depletion of of antioxidants um, will will leave the DNA exposed to to toxins. So when you don't have the resources it needs to get the toxins out, then your DNA, which is what how your cell replicates, is exposed to the toxins, and then you can start getting cancer, and then you can start getting other serious diseases. The, the toxins in our environment disrupt sugar metabolism and disrupts insulin resistance as well. So we're going to talk further about uh, in another webinar about uh, the skyrocketing of diabetes, um, which ties in here once again to 
toxicity environment that is disrupting the way that our body handles sugar. Dr. Al, Sh Al Schuler um, says that we should uh, basically um, have a rainbow on your plate when you when you're choosing foods, colorful foods. You always want to go with the most color. Emphasis is on plant foods, uh, flavonoids, um, which is plant foods, and that very much includes green tea. Will upregulate antioxidants. The doctor points out that, uh, according to the World Health Organization that in the next 20 years, the World Health Organization has said that we are going to experience a 57% increase in cancer diagnosis in the next 20 years. So this is an epidemic of lifestyle. This is a disease of excess. It's a result of, of too many calories, of, of too many toxins. We're not moving enough, we're, we're sitting too much, and basically too much stress. And, um, it's, and she says also that um, chronic stress leads to oxidative stress. So again, when we experience stress in the body and we experience mental emotional stress, that, that takes the chemistry away, that's acidic in nature, and that's stressful too. So feeling of gratitude feeling of, of love and accomplishment and joy actually helps to stabilize your DNA. Optimistic people have slower growth rates of cancer. That's the work of uh, Dr. Dr. Bernie Siegel, who also wrote uh, different books, The Body-Mind-Spirit Connection. Um, detox supports the body to do its job better. It's a daily affair. So when you take your supplement, it has detox a part of it as well, um, and including perhaps some other factors like chlorella um, or doing a, a seasonal detox or if you need to do a detox because you experience certain toxicity issues, having that done. But uh, certainly being mindful of it is of, of the situation that we are, of being having that 80,000 chemicals around us and in us and you know is something not to forget and to be also always vigilant. Also to be calorie sufficient and not excessive. Don't don't overeat. Frank uh, Lip, uh, Lipman is a medical doctor and um, he says that um, it uh, basically a clean and healed gut results in less anxiety symptoms and better mental emotional issues. So again, healing the gut first for any type of malady is a way to go. Again, he reports that there's more serotonin produced in the gut than the brain. So people that have situations with anxiety and depression and obsessive disorders, look to the gut. Don't treat anxiety before you treat the gut. Autoimmune conditions, off grains, gut dysbiosis. So again, looking to see if the person, it's certainly a big part of a checklist for any type of autoimmune situation, taking that person off grains or at least checking to see if they are grain sensitive. Detox is the entry post to any type of disease um, to see if that needs to be done. And again, watch your thoughts. Check in to see that uh, your brain isn't going crazy on you and just uh, again thank it for sharing um, you know if there's something negative or anxiety causing just watch your thoughts move more and to and love more as well and uh, he quotes uh, Mark Hyman who we um, one of the presenters we talked about earlier who says food plus love equals equals health okay Michael Stone is a, is a medical doctor, and um, he points out that how you move, the degree of movement, how you eat, the, the amount of sleep that you have, and your quality of your relationships will turn on and off genes. So what's Michael saying here? What Michael's saying here is just because you have cancer in your genes, in your genetic pool, or just because that you have Alzheimer's or dementia in your genetic pool, or heart disease, or arthritis, or whoever, whatever else, or a blood sugar challenge, does not does not seal your fate. 
it's certainly something that you should look at and do your homework on to stay away from it because if it is in your genetic tree, you can open that gene and voila, you can get it. But you're not privy to that malady just because it's in your family. So, but you have to take steps to keep away from it. Michael says his patient, when was the last time you felt well? That's a good question for, for, for a lot of us. And a lot of the reasons we don't feel well today is because of our toxicity in, in our environment. And we all work pretty hard. We don't get enough rest. And, um, you know, and that, that adds up as well. He says decreased methylation increases autism. Methylation is, is the detox mechanisms. So when you don't have the chemistry to detox, what he found is that there's more people with autism because of it. He increases the methylation. He gives the children the chemistry they need to detox. And what happens is that their autism improves. He also points out nutrition for methylation. Good quality protein, green plant food, a rainbow of veggies on your plate, different colors, and less bread and less pasta. And he also points out how heavy metals in your body can raise blood pressure. So, you know, you look at that, it's like how many people are on blood pressure medicine? You know, I mean, quite a few, yay? So, again, I mean, it, it's not total. I mean, there's many different reasons for it. I'm not saying that this is, this is the silver bullet, but it's certainly part of the checklist that I would say a good portion of people don't have to be on the lisinopril or the other uh, medications. They simply need to get they simply need to get the toxins out of their bodies and let the body do what it does best and have nor and, and thus have normal blood pressure. All right, Mary uh, Mary Ellen uh, Chalmers um, um, says that um, sh that uh, gluten intolerance contributes to uh, tooth decay. And, um, and she's found that correlation. And we find that more and more uh, people are gluten intolerant these days. And, you know, we've talked about it in the office, and you've seen it in the grocery stores about how um, there's, more, uh, there's more food choices for people with gluten intolerance. Well, it's not an accident um, d due to um, some um, scientific misadventures, so to speak. They messed up the, uh, the grains a bit. And, uh, which is uh, increase the amount of gluten in the grain substantially. And um, so people that were a little gluten intolerant before are now more so. Um, I like to use the analogy that you have put somebody that's a little bit pollen sensitive or has a little bit of ragweed sensitivity um, in a room that's really full of ragweed or pollen. And watch what happens. Well, you got people that have a little bit of gluten intolerance and you start giving them gluten and uh, they start experiencing much more symptoms, not only digestive-wise and headache-wise, but uh, basically the total uh, um, FLC, which we call feel like crap-wise, uh, through the body. And um, she says it also contributes to some tooth decay. Um, an acidic environment will leach the mercury um, and cause metal corrosion in the mouth. So carbonated drinks will cause some of the amalgams that people may still have in their mouth to start leaching. Um, a concern is about brushing the teeth and grinding the teeth. Um, using acidic foods such as carbonated drinks, uh, coffee, um, as well as acidic, um, can start to leach the mercury out of the, from the amalgams into the body. Um, she notes that there's a mercury and hypertension connection. Um, she also points out to be aware of certain toothpastes uh, that have sodium lauryl sulfite, uh, sulfate in them, uh, triclosane, and um, certain redu tartar reducing products and nitrite, nitrites in them too um, that are a little bit rough on the, on, the, on the gums and on the teeth themselves. Um, and there's some questionable there's some research, I'm not saying questionable research, but there is research out there um, that about contribution toward uh, cancer and challenges. And um, she likes this, this basically like hydrogen peroxide, uh, H2O2, and uh, some baking soda um, is perfect for, uh, for periodontal uh, needs.
Uh, Joseph Pisano uh, basically says that all disease begins in the colon and that with mercury filling, say you get one microgram per mercury filling leaks into the body uh, every day. So um, it's always been a um, an emphasis on holistic physicians um, to uh, to look and see how many amalgams a person has in their mouth and encourage them to be removed um, in a safe way by a dental professional that knows how to do so um, in, a, in a safe way. A uh, doctor points out that gold caps over mercury will actually increase the leakage as well. Uh, beware of certain fish. Tuna has a lot of mercury. Bass has a lot of mercury. So those are uh, two fish that have a lot of mercury and you want to uh, limit um, those type of fish in your diet. You want to increase your fiber because, as we mentioned in the last webinar, that's part of the detox mechanism as well, is, is having more fiber in the, in the digestive system to start grabbing some of the toxins, get out of the system. A product called N-acetylcysteine or NAC, uh, 500 or 1,000 uh, milligrams per day. And the agent that we use in the office called DMSA, this is a provocative agent that uh, will grab it out of your fat cells and into your urine and out of the body. Uh, provocative meaning that we need something to get it out of your fat, into your urine and out of your body. And this is the agent that does so like a magnet. And, and, um, and we, can, we use it to get a read to see what's in your body and to get it excreted. Dr. Brazorno says that sweating is the most effective way to get cadmium out of the body, so um, as well as other minerals uh, or other toxic uh, substances, rather. And he says, get into the body what it needs and get out of the body uh, what it what it does, and that's certainly par for life. All right, so we're coming into a little landing here, and want to summarize um, what we've been talking about in. Um, the webinar last Thursday, what we're talking about tonight, and what we talked about in the first webinar um, that is already posted on our website. How do we stay healthy in today's day and age? And you know, health is our most important asset. And uh, we look around us, and um, you know, we see more people that are ill um, that are not. We we see more people, average American, taking six to nine drugs a day. Um, than not, um, you know, just to, just to abolish symptoms. Um, you know, in my congregation, we say a, a prayer during services for people that are ill, and it's, it's like just about everybody is, is standing. So, um, you know, if we're on the standard American diet bus and the standard American approach, um, that's where we're headed. And um, gratefully, um, you and me and our other patients and other holistic people recognize this, that, hey, um, that way is not working. Um, maybe we need to look at other approaches. And by doing so, we're not saying that their approach is bad by any degree. Um, that would be silly. Um, there is a time for antibiotics, and there is a time for surgery, and there is a time for medical intervention. But there's a time to stay healthy. And the medical uh, and health societies in this country really have not taught us what we need to do and certainly have not really told us to, to the extent that needs to be explained um, what's happening with the environmental pollution and how it's influencing our health. So how do we stay healthy? Well, we want to avoid, minimize, and stay away from sugar and excessive carbs and grains. Sugar is a poison, my friends. And um, when we talk about sugar, we're talking about sucrose which is table sugar. We're not necessarily referring to fructose, which is present in fruits and vegetables. You always want to choose vegetables over fruit when you choose like a smoothie or something like, or, or some type of, of, of a blender drink like that. But um, you always want to, but when we're talking about sugar here, we're talking about what you're choosing to snack on. All right, so you want to shift away from the candy and take the candy away from your children or minimize it so you're not that mean, but uh, get them more into healthy snacks like trail mixes um, and protein to if they need to snack on something. 
Um, that's important. Sugar is like kryptonite to your immune system. It short circuits it. It's a major contributor to all disease. There's way too much in our environment. It's messing up our blood counts. Stay away from sugar. Minimize it. Keep it out of your coffee. And that's not necessarily, you know, to go with Diet Cokes either because then you get, you're dealing with neural poisons in the, in the sucralose there too. So, you know, go with more, you know, natural sugars that are available via honey, uh, other sweetener agents that you can find like at Whole Foods or other type of um, vitamin stores if you need to sweeten things. Um, you want to keep moving, keep exercising. Don't be sedentary. Stretch every morning. Keep dancing, and 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 keep the body going. Okay, so that's that's important. Now, you're not all going to do like you know headstands and things like that. That's not what I'm saying. But as we get older, we tend to want to sit a little bit more. We tend not to dance as much as we used to. We tend not to shake as much as we used to. And we got to keep our thoughts young, and we got to keep our bodies moving in a young sort of way as well. Eat a rainbow of colors on your plate. Keep those veggies coming. I don't like peas, okay, but there's lots of other veggies to choose from. You may not like peas either. You may not like beets. So you may not like whatever, but there's plenty to choose from. Find something you like and make it and use it as part of your diet. Pay attention to your gut. How's your digestive system doing? Proper bowel habits is two to three times a day. If you're not there, you're constipated, and you need to work with that, or we need to work with that. So keeping vigilant that you're having proper bowel function, that as you get older, you include things maybe like a probiotic or an acidophilus product um, with part of your diet is, is makes sense. Keep your gut healthy. Get your sleep. I know. I need my mama to put me to bed too sometimes, but she ain't here. But uh, we need to be vigilant as far as um, getting enough rest to detox and declutter our brains, let our bodies um, clear out and heal uh, is imperative. Take your vitamin mineral supplement. That's, that's important. It's not about taking pills, though. It's about foods that you choose to take to nourish your body and supplementing with with these products to make up perhaps for any deficits. Do a detox. If you notice that you, yeah, I do get rashes or I do feel tired. Uh, my hair texture is changing. I do have allergies. Um, I have had some exposure. I did have amalgams. Um, I do have certain autoimmune situations. My blood pressure is high. I mean, any of the things that we've talked about, or if you'd like to do, uh, to take the detox questionnaire in the office, that's there for you. Um, there's various levels of detox. There's a seven-day detox that focuses on your colon and your liver. Um, there's the um, Metagenics Renew product that um, is about a, a, a 10 days to two weeks type of clean out that enhances your liver um, and, and colon as well. Um, and then there's also the um, um, d using DMSA to get the metals out and then we also that we determine through through a urine test and then we can also choose a homeopathic product. For example, if you're high in lead, then we can find a homeopath for lead to draw that out. So there's very different levels depending on, on you as, as an individual and what your, your needs are. So I want to thank you for joining me tonight. Um, I, I appreciate it very much. And, um, you know, is you being here tonight um, for the substantiates and encourage my time as, uh, during the days and during the weekends of, of assembling this information for you. Uh, within a week or two, we will have this on our website, and this is our website here, drterabello.com, uh, to archive it for review or to share it with other members of your family and friends, and we're also looking to enhance that part of our website. I wish you a good night, and I, I hope you have a wonderful week. Thank you again. Good night.